Welcome to Finland, the home of rally. Throughout this summer, I kept asking you guys what is your favorite driving location via community polls, and after the finals, Finland got the first place. No wonder. Now let's get down to business. For the alignment, I always opt for a little bit of negative toe or toe out on the front wheels to allow for better cornering. Usually, I don't go over minus 0.5 degrees for the tracks with fast corners because I'm starting to feel the car under steering. And toe into the rear wheels for better stability and easier corner drive outs. The camber values are influenced again by the overall speed of the track. For a track with fast corners, a higher value will be necessary to keep you planted on the road because of the high centrifugal forces the car experiences which lead to high tire deformation. So I set on these values. Minus 125 on the front to ensure more precise turning and stability during cornering and minus 075 on the rear for more straight line stability. The differentials in Finland are set more open than usual. These log values allow for very smooth cornering and ensure that understeering won't be a problem. If you feel the need for more traction, you can go one pip higher on the rear driving lock. The preload values are set to prevent excessive understeer when lifting your foot off the throttle. So these values ensure the perfect amount of rotation from corner entry through mid corner, making turns a piece of cake. As we all know too well, Finland is known for its treacherous terrain filled with a lot of jumps. So you should set the dampers as follows. The slow bump at minus 1 to absorb the small bumps. The fast bump at plus 3 so you can take the bigger jumps without hitting the bump stop and lose control. And set the bump division a little bit over the median value. Maybe here you can go one pip up if you feel like it. And the rebound can be set at minus 2 or maybe minus 3 depending on everyone's driving style. These tracks have a lot of bumps. I mean, they're mostly made out of bumps and jumps that leave the car. So you want to stay in contact with the road as much as possible, but at the same time maintain good stability. Braking force and brake bias should be set so that you can manipulate the car's center of mass before and during corners. This will help you rotate the car, pointing his nose to the inside of the corner. So this typically means using medium-high braking force and setting the brake bias more towards the front wheels, as they bear most of the car's weight during braking. Sending too much brake force to the rear wheels can lead to lockups, causing the wheels to slide and therefore lose traction. The handbrake force doesn't need to be set too high, because the rear wheels will lock too hard when pulling the handbrake and slow you down too much. This effect is even more noticeable at slow speeds. You pull the handbrake before a turn and the car might just stop mid-rotation. For the gearbox, I always opt for more acceleration. This way I make sure that little to no time is lost after taking turns. So for the tracks with lot of corners, this means a short final drive. The rest of the gears have to be set according to the track. So the engine is never under revved, struggling to make power, or at the rev limiter in the fifth gear, preventing you from going faster on a straight line. Finally, in the springs tab, you need to set the ride height at a safe value of around 60 mm. Because as mentioned earlier in the damping tab, after jumping you may hit the bump stop, which may lead to loss of control. On the other hand, the roads are surrounded by ditches mostly. So to make sure you can take the cuts without hitting the car's underbody and crash, you need higher ground clearance. To maintain control over the bumps, jumps and crests, you need to soften the springs to a medium-low value. Throughout testing, I found that softer values than these combined with the same damper settings as before may mess with the car's stability too much, while stiffer ones may not offer such great absorption making the car hard to control over uneven terrain. You can set the RBs as follows. Softer on the front, so the wheels that steer the car are allowed to travel more independently up and down, this way ensuring great contact, and stiffer on the back for more body roll absorption. Now I know this video came a little bit late, but you can still give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. You can show your appreciation even further via the thanks button or by becoming a member of this channel. Join the club on Racenet if you want to compete in the championship and come for a chat on the Discord server, ask for driving tips, share moments and more. Thank you so much for watching and as always, see you on the track. Bye bye!